Hi, this is Rich McNutt, the author of Hunter's Choices. I have had hunters feel guilty about leaving meat in the freezer. Personally, I do not understand the hows involved in a printed recipe. I needed to be shown how to cook. So this cooking series really is for me. I have discovered that after I try a recipe several times, it turned out much better. Hunt smart by choice and good cooking. Hi, my name is Scott Bozlovich, and I'm with Wild Things Show, cooking wild game today. Today we're going to do a pheasant stew in the crock pot, so you can get it ready in the morning and when you come home, it'll be all set. I have Starla Basco with me today, and she's developed a bunch of different seasoning mixes and flavorings, and we're going to try them out today. It should give it an interesting uh, flavor texture and profile. And the, as it simmers all day in the crock pot, well, you're away at work, and when you come home, it'll be all ready. Sure. So, Scott, what are you doing with the pheasant today? What we're going to do is we're going to just cut it up into smaller pieces so that it cooks evenly and faster. Are you deboning it, or are you gonna just going to use it whole? I'm going to leave the bones in for right now. We'll debone it after, after it simmers, the meat will fall right off the bones. Now, are you only using the breast, or are you going to use the legs? I'm going to use the whole thing. That's great when you don't waste them. A lot of people throw away the legs because they don't think there's any meat on them, but there's it quite a bit is. if you look. The thigh. You find that a chef's knife will just cut right through those bones? Oh, not a problem. Now this bottom part I don't really use because there isn't any meat on it. You can put it in and simmer it for the extra flavor. But today we're going to use a little bit of chicken stock and we're going to use some uh, cream and mushroom soup so it's not really necessary. We got our pan here heating up. It should be nice and warm. We'll add a little bit of butter. So you, do you prefer butter over oil? Well butter is going to give us a little bit browner color today. And that's what we're looking for so when you pull out the pieces they're nice and golden brown and the flavor is all sealed in from the braising technique. What we're going to do is we have a little bit of flour here. We're going to add in some of your some of your seasoning mix. The Grandma's Garden. Can you tell me what's all in here? Now that Grandma's Garden is just filled with flavor. It has celery, onions, peppers, um, I say onion, garlic, um, and then it has a little hint of cumin to it. So it's real nice on poultry, um, fantastic on burgers, but there I see you're just mixing it right into your flour. Yeah. What I did was I mixed it into the flour. It's going to immediately season the, the, the pheasant. And then I saved some that we can put inside the sauce too to give it a little bit more flavor. So you're just using the, the pheasant and they're kind of still wet from, yeah, they're still from damp. defrosting. And that helps. And I left the fat on because that's going to give us more flavor too instead of picking it off. And it looks like you're just placing them down yep. in there and kind of rubbing them around in the butter so that they're not sticking to the pan. Yeah, these should be good. So you completely coat them. Yep. Shake it around. You could use a Ziploc bag too and shake it. Do the old shake and bake, yeah. shake and braise today. Because we have plenty of it here. Now what I suggest doing is a couple of pheasants at a time that you have some leftovers in the fridge that you can pick the pheasant meat off of and make salads and make whatever else you like. So a nice Maybe pheasant a salad? Yeah, a pasta dish or something. So do you do that on low heat or high or medium or what do I you suggest? I have it on medium heat. The green part is actually a little bit on the tough side. That's why we don't, we don't use it. You can use it if you're making like stock. or It makes kind of a nice topping to put on top of of your dish. Okay. What you do, is, what really easy is all you do is slice it really thin. So you're going to use this then, leek for beautification. You can, yeah, and then deep fry it. Oh, and it'll come up golden, crisp, and brown. And it'll be wonderful. 
But if you just throw it in your, if you just throw it in here, it might be kind of on the chewy side. So we'll use the white part for this dish. So why do you choose a leek for this over over another vegetable? Well, I like the leek. I like the leek because it's hearty and it's going to hold up in the crock pot all day. Okay. If you put an onion in there, it'll just cook away and disappear. I like how you cut it in half and put the flat side down so that it doesn't slide it doesn't over your. Doesn't away on you. And if you cut it on a slight, on a slight angle, it, it gives it a nice look to it. Because you eat with your eyes before you ever put it in your mouth. So it's pretty much one leek in this recipe? Yeah, Is that we'll about what you leak. use? We're going to make this really hearty because feed all about four people out of that one little pheasant. So you're really stretching your meat, mm -hmm. which is nice. So we'll leave that. We're going to put some carrot in there. We'll do the same thing. We'll cut it on an angle. And just big enough pieces that it'll be done in about an hour. So you're making your sizes pretty consistent so they're going to cook at the right. same rate. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and, and like I said, you eat with your eyes so you want it to look good. So you want to have everything the same size. So what other vegetables could you add besides leeks and carrots and potatoes? Well, put parsnips and turnips in there would be good. Rutabaga. Oh yeah. You know. We'll do a little bit of red potato. Oh, red is a beautiful color. Now you got some orange and green and reds. I like the mixed fingerlings that they sell nowadays too. So you have an, another chunk of meat here, Scott. What, what I have is this? from another hunting trip, I have a piece of wild boar ham. And what we're going to do is we're going to julienne that up and we're going to put that in towards the end so that, it doesn't, so that it doesn't cook too long and get tough. And we don't want them to dry out either. So this but it'll is, add that nice smoky flavor of the ham. So almost like hint, adding a hint of bacon flavor right. to it, but you're adding a boar ham. And that's that looks like it's about a cup. Oh, a lot of poultry has nice accent when you add bacon or ham to it and sure that's why they do chicken cordon bleu oh yeah <laughs> that's one of my favorites i love the chicken cordon bleu but this is easy and what you want to do is you want to go through your freezer too and you want to think about all the stuff that you have in there when you're planning your dinner and not just not just stay focused on the one thing look and see what you have on everything so that you don't have food that you've hunt that you spent time hunting ammunition and mice and seeds and all the fees hunting and then then sat in the freezer and rotted when you can just mix a couple of things together and make a really nice meal and enjoy it you know so many people have just freezers full of wild game that nobody's eating and partly they partly they're afraid of it or they they're not sure how to cook it and that's what we're trying to do is just show them some new different ways, some easy things, some things that are similar to other dishes that they would eat that when they went out to a restaurant or they ate at someone else's house. So you're basically substituting what you yeah. normally would probably use with chicken, but instead you're utilizing exactly. pheasant that you had in your freezer and some and some wild boar. Um, I think a lot of a lot of hunters end up with that problem where it sits in your freezer and it becomes freezer burnt and it's really a shame because we we make the same recipes over, over and over and over again. That recipe. Yep. But and I, I'm trying to show you that with just cutting a few vegetables and we're going to use a couple can canned goods out of the store that you can make a wonderful dinner and it's not that hard. So the cream of mushroom soup that we're used to using with our venison and uh, yeah. our pheasant. Now you're going to take it to another level with some right. We're layers gonna make, of flavor. And you're going to be just shocked huh? the difference it is. Oh, I can't wait to try it. We're starting to brown up. Nice. It's it's starting to pop the oil here a little bit. we got to be careful we don't get hurt. We'll brown up the other side here and then we'll transfer it all into the crock pot. And can that slowly simmer or well, we're off at work. So you're going to wait to take all the meat off until the final stage. Yeah, until it's cooked all the way through. It'll come off real easy. Right now you'd struggle getting the bones out of it. So you're just browning it at this point and you're not cooking it thoroughly? No, it's we're just browning it outside to seal it up. Seal all those juices inside. Make them taste great. It sure is golden. Yeah. We got our pheasant all browned up and what we're going to do is we're going to just start. We're going to put our, our leeks in the bottom here to hold the pheasant up. Now that makes, they won't stick to the pan 
right. either with that leek will give it a little barrier. Yep, we'll put our leeks and our potatoes because our potatoes are going to take the longest to cook. So we want to put them on the bottom where that's going to be the hottest. And then we'll put our pheasant on top of that. Make it all nice one layer if you can. Okay, now we're going to add our can of cream of mushroom soup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put half a can of chicken stock in here and half a can of, of half and half to make it creamy. Now you could use heavy cream? Heavy cream or in a pinch. You could use milk, but the, the cream actually will thicken it up and it will be a little bit nicer. If you're going to use milk, what I suggest you do is add a little bit of extra flour in your pan when you're right before you take the pheasant out to make a little bit of roux. A little bit of a roux. Yeah, and then it'll thicken it up. Okay, and then we have our carrots here and our portobello mushrooms. So is that just one container of one mushrooms? One container of mushrooms. And if you can see, we got quite a bit of food here. We'll usually have enough for four people by the time it's all said and done. Are you going to serve that over rice or potatoes or? Well, you can you serve this over wh whatever you'd like. We're going to add this ham. We'll put this in the refrigerator for now. The, the, the boar, smoked boar ham. We'll put it in the fridge for now. And like 10, 15 minutes before you're going to serve the dinner, we'll add this in just to flavor it up a little bit and to warm it up so it's cooked, so it's hot all the way through. So you don't add it originally and why is that? No, because I'm worried that it's going to get it tough. That's going to dry out and get tough in there sitting all day. Kind of overcooking because yeah. you're simmering those so long. This new style crock pot's nice. It has little clamps to hold the lid down so you don't have a, it has a seal around the top so that you don't have liquid coming out on your counters. Like I used to cover my counter with a couple of rags because I was worried, you know, I go to work and come home and there'd be a puddle on the floor. But this should be good. Well, Does that seem to hold the moisture in nicer for you then too? I think so. I think so. We're going to plug it in and we'll get it going so that it's ready to go when we get home. Wonderful. Hi, I'm Scott Boslevich. I'm with Wild Things Show. We're going to be cooking wild game today with Starla. She has a, a line of seasoning packets that makes dips and seasons all of your food and makes it wonderful. So if we were to buy them from you, where would we get them? You can go to ilovedip.com and all my flavors are on there. I have 18 different flavors and I also have a, a beer batter, uh, beer bread mix. <laughs> we used a little of grandma's garden mix, season mix, for our pheasant. What else do you have for us? I have a citrus dill. This one's fantastic on fish, on chicken breast. You can do deviled eggs, um, makes cheese balls and dips. Um, that's a nice flexible one on, on poultry too. So now if you're going to make a dip, it's just sour cream and a little bit of water? Or sour cream and mayonnaise. Sour cream and mayonnaise. Or you could do cream cheese or you could do Greek yogurt. Oh. Um, I even like it with avocados. Oh, that would be a good one. And you can even thin them down and make them into salad dressings. So instead of having all those strange things in your salad dressings, you can do them from scratch and you know exactly how to do them. So you have you have the grandma's garden, the citrus dill, the hot habanero. How hot is the habanero? Uh, the habanero is the hottest one that I have. Um, I don't know. I eat it, I cry, but a lot of people really enjoy this one. Uh, makes a fantastic burger. It'll do five pounds of burger. Um, you can add it onto your chicken breasts, little eggs on in the morning if you want a little pick-me-up. But uh, you can make a beer-battered fish with it. But that one's that one's pretty darn hot. Nice one to take to work and share with your co-workers and your friends. Then you have your your tomato and horseradish. That's the twisted tomato. Um, that one's nice on tenderloins, on pork chops. Uh, that one also you can do a beer battering with. Uh, cheese ball, add it into your uh, Bloody Marys. Um, so that one, you get a, it's got a tomato base and then it has a hint of horseradish with it. What I like is you have the no MSG or no gluten already in, so you don't have to worry when you add this into your meal if you're allergic to those things. Exactly. All of my seasonings are no MSG, no gluten, non-GMO. Um, a lot of them are all natural too, so you know exactly what you're getting in them. 
So if we were to buy them from you, where would we get them? You can go to uh, ilovedip.com and all my flavors are on there. I have 18 different flavors and I also have a, a beer batter, uh, beer bread mix. So all you add is beer or a soda and you have a, a beer bread. Oh, I like those. Very simple to do. Another one, great for people that are working, goes great with your crock pot meals. You can use it, the beer bread mix you can use as a, a batter for your fish or you can make it, make it into an actual loaf of beer bread. How long have you been in the seasoning business? About six years. Six years and it's just starting to take off or it's been real busy all it's, along? It's been really fantastic. I uh, do uh, a lot of sports shows during the winter and then arts and crafts shows through the summer and then I also do fundraisers. Mm. Fundraisers, that helps everybody out. It does. It's a I do a 50% profit fundraiser, so. That's generous. Works out nice. I love working with small groups that, you know, I have no minimum. Well, thank you for coming out today. I had a wonderful time. I hope you did. Well, thank you, Chef Scott. I appreciate your time, and I enjoyed cooking with you. And come on back when the pheasant's done, and we'll eat. Well, we'll see you in about 10 hours then. All right, thanks. <laughs> thank you. Our pheasant has been cooking slowly away in the crock pot on low for the last eight hours. We're going to add our smoked wild boar ham to give it a little bit more flavor. And all we're doing is tossing that in, stirring it up, and we'll plug it back in. Ready to go. So that's going to make it all nice and tender. So our vegetables are almost tender. Yeah, we'll put the lid back on. And we just keep it on low for for uh, 10 hours, and we're gonna kick it. We're gonna kick it up on high here, finish it off because we're home for dinner. Should take another hour and a half to two hours to finish up. All right, it's time for dinner. Let's check on our pheasant. Turn this off. Be careful of the steam when you open these up; they kind of get hot. Boy, that smells fantastic. Everything looks so nice and tender. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. So now you could do this a couple different ways. You could actually serve it up as whole pieces or you or could... Or in a soup bowl. We could serve it as like stew. We're, tonight we're going to do it as whole pieces. Now this would be, be fantastic over mashed potatoes or rice. Or rice or pasta. You can clean the pheasant off the bones, stir it all up and it make a great topping for pasta. What about other poultry? Could you use other poultry besides the pheasant? Sure, duck or quail or goose. It'll all, it'll all work good in this recipe. Now See how nice the sauce is? It's a beautiful nice sauce. Now, could you also use this with pork? Or, um, oh, sure. In fact, you could you could do this with the wild boar would be really good, too. How about venison? Yes, venison works well with this. Ven would, would you use a, a beef stock instead of the chicken, then? Um, you can go either way, or you can use half chicken stock and half beef stock, which makes it kind of kind of mellow, and then you get a little more of the venison flavor. So then you'd be layering the flavors with doing both of those. I'm Scott with the Wild Things Show. I'm Starla Batsko, and we made crockpot pheasant with portobello mushrooms and leeks. We're with the Wild Things Show, cooking wild game. <laughs>